and welcome to the Insured Story Podcast, the platform to spread knowledge on insurance innovation, digital disruptions, and entrepreneurship. Our website insuredstory.com, and we are available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon Music. Today, we will discuss on the topic revolutionizing financial inclusion in the insurance sector. And for now, I'm delighted to welcome our guest Rajiv Malhan, who is the head of fintech innovations and digital public infrastructure at Aditya Billa Capital. Rajiv is a strategic and tech savvy leader with more than 20 years of progressive experience in conceptualizing and implementing business and digital transformation strategies. He works closely with the executive leadership team and business heads across various departments in BFSI domain to develop digital and business transformations roadmap. He also collaborate and strategize to ensure transformational initiatives are fully integrated to organizational objectives and customer expectations. He is an expert in solving complex business problems across the organization, impacting revenue, cost, and customer experience by crafting simplified journeys through digital tools. Being an expert in his field, he is invited as a keynote speaker at various forums to comment on digital public infrastructure, financial inclusion, emerging technologies, customer experience, and engagement strategies. Financial inclusion is one of the key part where we are definitely going to try a lot of content in this podcast. And lastly, to add to the kind of uh, forums and content that he covers is simplified customer journeys, gamification of services, and metaverse in insurance domain, to name a few. So Rajiv, a warm welcome to the show. Hi, Surya. Uh, thanks for inviting me to InsurTech Podcast and uh, that detailed intro. Really delighted to listen myself. Uh, we should <laughs> surely try <laughs> that our listeners... No, absolutely. It's quite a value. great achievement and people must understand and know, know you better to actually relate to what they do and how best they can connect with you for any sort of you know partnership or, or, or engagement in these areas. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. I think uh, this uh, more than 20 years of experience will surely add value to the listeners. So Absolutely. I have worked in various domains. I have worked in various uh, categories. So let's see what questions you have in mind and shoot and I'll try to answer yeah. as best as I can. I think the topic we are going to discuss revolutionizing financial inclusion in the insurance sector. It's one of the very you know, uh, important uh, topic or important area of discussion in current economic scenario, especially in a country like India, and of course, in a sector like insurance, right? So, you know, without yeah. any further ado, uh, my first question to you is, can you explain what financial inclusion means in the context of insurance and why it is important? Yeah, happy to have it for sure. Uh, that's a that's a question which is coming nowadays a lot of it. Uh, this particular word is getting a lot of uh, focus nowadays. So let me uh, try you know telling you the definition and what it all means. So financial inclusion means that uh, uh, individuals and businesses have uh, access to useful um, and affordable financial products and services that can meet their needs. Uh, maybe it's a transactions or payments or savings or insurance or lending. Uh, and all these products are, and services are delivered in a responsible and sustainable way. So that is very important that it has to be in a responsible and sustainable way. So that is uh, what financial inclusion means, I would say. By uh, Nowadays, as I mentioned to you earlier, this word is getting huge focus. I think this is due to commitment from G20 to advance uh, financial inclusion world. Worldwide. And uh, G20 has also formed its commitment to implement the G20 high level principles for uh, digital financial inclusion. So, this is the overall piece, but I would not say that okay, G20 is the only reason for financial inclusion to uh, get very much visible. If you come back to India, we are equally committed for financial in inclusion. And just to tell you that okay, we have financial inclusion index also. Uh, which uh, gets released by RBI every year. It was launched in, uh, I think, 2021, where, uh, you know, 
picking up how well financial products and services can be assessed by the general population. And uh, so you will be pleased to know that for 2022, the latest uh, one which has come last year. So it's shown the improvement to 56.4% to 53.9% which was there in 2021. And um, RBI tracks some 97 indicators uh, which covers banking, investment, insurance, uh, pension and tracking their delivery and usage among the population. So it has uh, the, the it, it 97 indicators covers into the access uh, and uh, there's a usage and the quality. So this is how this whole financial inclusion comes into. So, you, you know, some interesting points you made, but I would, you know, like to understand what exactly is driving these, you know, just a little bit of out of context, but just out of curiosity. Driving this is, as I mentioned to you, so uh, financial inclusion, it is an index which we are covering, which says right. that, okay, journal public, our normal journal public, what is the access, what is the ease of access they have while having these kind of uh, indexes, which I mentioned about banking. So are they able to, you know, access banking easily? Are they able to pick up insurance easily? Are they able to invest easily? So the, the way we are tracking about the Penetration, for example, insurance penetration mm. is coming into how yeah. many people are able to access insurance. So this is financial inclusion, right? right. So I think we'll right. cover detail in detail. If you want me, we can start or basis your questions. So as of now, I'm just giving you a flavor of it. That okay, financial yeah. inclusion yeah. means how many people across India are able to have access, use, uh, with equality. Uh, right. All these uh, products and services for financial pieces. So that's the financial inclusion piece. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, uh, Rajiv, moving on to the next discussion uh, point for the day, what role does technology play in advancing financial inclusion in, in insurance? And are there any specific digital solutions that have proven to be effective? Hmm. Okay. So, Surya, so before we get into... Uh, what are the technologies which are uh, available for insurance inclusion? Let me understand why financial inclusion is important for insurance. I think that that will be uh, that will help our yeah, understanding yeah. of the context better. Uh, now, if you if I want to convey back to you why it is important for uh, in context for insurance, still insurance penetration in India is only four point two percent, and and, uh, and that is say overall, right? General and life. Yes, that's overall that's yeah. coming into. So this is the percentage of insurance premium to gross domestic product. It is not sometimes it has been considered that only 4.2% of population is, is covered. So it is not that. So this is the percentage of insurance premiums which have been paid to gross domestic product. Right. So then we have another data. Let me share another data with you for then there's the insurance density, which is calculated as the ratio of premium to population. It's a per capita premium, which you say. So right. if you pick up uh, for insurance density in India in 2021-22, it stands around 91 US dollars. Whereas uh, in life insurance, uh, it is on around 70 US dollars, which is uh, what it is, around 6,000 rupees. And let's suppose if you go to a non-life category, then it's uh, around 20, 22 US dollars, which is again, I would say near to 2,000 rupees. So this is the overall insurance density we have and uh, total life insurance individual policy if I share the data with you that was uh, that is around individual life insurance policies which are active in India around some 36 crores. So which means wow. there's a huge huge scope of yep. life insurance in India. So are we insuring only a few set of people who are living in metros and tier one and few of in tier two? Or we have uh, rest of the population have access to only Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, which is the life cover of rupees 2 lakh. And uh, other one is the Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana, which is providing accidental cover of 2 lakhs uh, by paying some 20 rupees. My, my concern is I'm not sure how many people are actually aware about these schemes and how many are purchasing and how many are promoting these schemes. So the concern is, does it mean that people in tier two, tier three doesn't have money or they don't have an intent to purchase life insurance? 
No, that's that's not the case. Let me convey back to you. That's not the case. So that's yeah. that's why I'm saying financial inclusion is far far more important uh, in life insurance sector because we have barely reached to the tier two tier three cities. So that's the reason that okay, financial inclusion is very very important. Yeah, yeah, true. So yeah, so if you now ask me that okay, uh, the second the uh, the question actually which you asked was how technology can help or yeah. whether technology can make some progress towards that. So as I uh, mentioned to you that okay, we are probably so in many of the forums it has been discussed that India comprises of three hundred million families. And uh, most of the fintechs, most of the startups, most of the organizations in BFSI are working towards top 30 million families, right? So everything has been, you know, assessed by them. So the question comes out to be that, okay, the rest of the people, don't they understand technology? Don't they have a capacity to pay? Or they don't have an intent to pay? They may be financially literate, I would say. That's a, that's a possibility. But who... Whose responsibility is? Who carries this responsibility that we have to make them financially literate, and how we can we should convey back to them that okay they need insurance, they should purchase insurance. Uh, but I think uh, Corona has also, uh, I would say, helped in this whole piece that people are able to understand that insurance is important. But now they have intent to pay, they have capacity to pay, they have they understand the technology also. Right, and they are also convinced that okay, we should purchase insurance. But now, who is missing in this whole part? That probably the insurance companies are missing. They have to be there. They have to. Uh, can, should, uh, they should be available at their level and in their language and uh, whatever the customer journey is, which these people understand. If they are available, I'm sure people are ready to purchase life insurance. So, in this whole piece, technology can serve a lot, lot better because the challenge for uh, these insurance industries or the insurance companies was in earlier that the cost of acquisition is very, very high. So, cost of acquisition as well as the cost to serve was extremely high. So, that's why they were feeling that, okay, how can we reach to those villages? How can we reach to those smaller tier two, tier three cities? Though they know that okay, people have money to purchase and they have an intent to purchase also. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware that the okay, cost of KYC when it started, it was uh, in, I would say, in triple digits also. I have heard it was in starting, it was in four digits also. But now, you know, cost of KYC, putting the validation to a customer, it is coming to a single digit now. And it is uh, somewhere it will, we are able to do it in eKYC, less than two rupees also. So, cost is coming down, cost of convincing a customer is coming down, cost of serving a customer is coming down, we are able to serve these customers on WhatsApp and all. So, if all these technologies are available, what is holding us, we are not able to reach. Maybe that okay, we need to put all these things together in a one commit, we have to make those people understand and we have to understand their psychology, we have to, data are also available. Just make the right set of propensity and right set of acquisition. I'm sure technology can play a lot, lot more better in taking in insurance to those tier to tier systems. Over to you. Yeah, I mean, the, the accessibility part, and of course, you know, how the perception is changing, or rather, of course, there's more room to change. I think that will have a much more, you know, or rather would create a better picture or on how inclusion can shape the future of insurance, right? And this is a very, very important topic, especially in a in country like India where penetration is certainly very low, but the opportunity is much, much higher than any other matured market, I would say. So it's going to be interesting how technology, uh, you know, intent, as you mentioned, the support from the regulators, and of course, how uh, uh, the new age in techs and the old incumbents or the big incumbents are come, can come together to make this difference. And this difference is nothing, uh, not just to the companies, I would say. It's, it's a broader benefit to the society as they come together forward, as they 
learn more what insurance is and definitely how their perception changes because in a country like india insurance was either treated you know just as a tax saving tool or the trust factor was you know near to zero right yeah yeah so you mentioned uh, the regulator so let me you know mention uh, IRDO here so mr panda is very aggressive so i would surely want to commend that okay he is pushing insurance organizations to you know improve the penetration so yeah, yeah. as of now uh, you know from IRDO only from these guys they have given uh, all life insurance and general insurance companies a state so where you know all uh, uh, one particular player has to pick up the rest of the player and work towards improvisation of the uh, penetration in that particular state so everybody is getting one state or the other so that will surely help improvisation yeah. in uh, penetration so there's a lot That's of promising lots of promising steps that has been taken by the regulator in past i think one or two years and yes. i'm sure it's going yes. to change more perfect so uh, rajiv you know moving on to the last uh, discussion point for the day is how does digital public infrastructure contribute to financial inclusion uh, especially in the insurance sector and what specific elements of digital infrastructure such as connectivity or digital payment systems are essential for expanding the uh, insurance access what do you see in this area so digital public infrastructure so dpi is a new name earlier we used to call it digital public goods right so the why why it is coming on to be why it is important so as i mentioned to you the cost of acquisition or the cost of serving a customer was far far expensive it was far high so that was the reason people were not insurers were not able to reach to those areas and they feel that okay fraudulent activities actually were happening misselling was also happening so that's why it was you know as I, as you mentioned earlier the trust was coming down and the cost was also becoming very high for insurers to reach there so digital public infrastructure will help covering this whole stuff so as of now dpi has started for uh, the lending piece as, uh, to start with ondc and okin so all these uh, things are coming into but uh, as you mentioned digital payments is something which will surely surely help customers to serve better they are able to pay otherwise they have to for, for example they have to pay insurance premium they have to go to one insurance branch to make a premium, premium payment so that's why your retention and persistency is slower now you have e nash you have uh, uh, payments which you can pay online so this is helping connectivity obviously it has helped the entire ecosystem of india so that's why uh, entire connectivity piece is also pick up well uh account aggregator is also changing i would say that's a, that's a becoming a big tool for all that stuff just coming because the larger challenge was there were no digital footprints which we were able to capture for the customers for living in this year to day three cities so account aggregator which is a consent based uh system where you can hand over your information directly to the insurer or any of the uh, financial information you user so you can immediately get give it to the specific uh, bfsi organization and that's a consent base it goes directly to uh, BF, uh, this organization they are they're having all the models which are ready and then you are able to offer insurance immediately so there are no movement of papers to happen so insurance aggregator is one piece which will surely help the entire ecosystem in taking it out other digital public infrastructures are also coming for example now you have a hcx which is a health claim exchange which is also coming into where the all the claims can be directly picked up from the system and there is no in between no handshake of uh, you know your, your documents are getting into and uh, going forward we will see ohs and also which is open health services network portion which we call it. so all these things will help all the insurers to reach to the farthest remote areas and offer insurance yeah so and on, on, on the same way your uh, public who is purchasing this insurance they are able to see their account statements they are able to get served on whatsapp they are able to make payments so for example if claim also helps uh, comes into picture they are able to you know claim also so all these things will help you know the expanding of buy 
So we, we normally use this uh, particular statement. How can we expand the pie? How can we take it further? So DPI will help us in bringing down the cost with accuracy. No fraudulent activities can happen. And directly it is within customer and the insurers. So direct communication is happening. And this is consent based activities which are happening. So I think DPI is going to play a huge, huge role in, you know, making us a partnership. Yeah, absolutely. No, you can, you can look for various emerging technologies to function. You can look to improve accessibility, accessibility of insurance, even to, you know, yeah. tier two, tier three areas to digital uh, uh, solutions, digital products. But at the end of yeah. the day, if the infrastructure is not stable, nothing's going to work. Right. So Very right. that robustness is much more required. And as you said, DPI is going to be the future, how it's uh, are going to not just reduce cost, but make things more efficient for the user. Yeah. So, yeah, with that thought, Rajiv, thank you very much. A fantastic discussion. And thank you for sharing your th thoughts today. A true delight to have you as our guest. Thank you so much, Surya. Thank you so much. And I'm sure uh, we as Indians as and uh, whosoever is listening to this podcast should understand that India is shining and India is shining very brightly. Yeah. And the kind yeah. of uh, things which you are bringing in, the kind of technology which are in short techs and fintechs are bringing in, as well as, uh, you know, various non-profit organizations uh, who are working into, as the volunteers are coming into, and they're putting everything into peace. So this is actually very heartening to see that, okay, everybody's coming together for this nation building exercises. So Absolutely. I'm part of few, right. but uh, amazing work is getting done. And I would say that okay, in the next two, three years, you will see a lot and lot of things which are happening and uh, more accurate data, which is going to come and more yeah. uh, trustworthy, I would say, uh, initiatives is going to happen, which will surely help end customers that, okay, if he's providing some consent, some data sharing is happening, it is happening for his own good. Yeah. And uh, he will be able to get better customized products and services. So good days to come. Absolutely. I think the next big opportunity is yet to come, but it's going to be yeah. coming in this very place. So yeah, so lastly to wrap this up, thank you for listening and see you at our next episode. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye for now.